close your eyes and focus on your breath. No one is coming in, no one is going out. And just stay with it. It's the staying with it that turns this into meditation. Just watching your breath for a little bit doesn't really mean much. But if you stick with it over time, you have to develop certain qualities of mind. You have to develop mindfulness, the ability to keep something in mind over time, and alertness, the ability to watch what's actually going on. You need these two qualities in everything you do, because what the teaching is all about is that we are causing ourselves suffering, and we're doing it from our own ignorance. We're not watching what we're doing. We're not watching what we're saying or the thinking. Or we watch a little bit, but we don't watch all the way through from the actual intention through the action and from the action on to the result. This is why we don't learn from our actions, because the basic principles as to what's skillful and what's not are displaying themselves all the time. It's not like the Buddha made up the idea of karma or he made up the idea of good and bad or skillful and unskillful. It was just that he was very observant, and he noticed how unobservant most of us are. So we need to be able to increase our powers of observation. This is why we have to learn how to be mindful so we can stay with one topic long enough to see it through, and alert to watch what's the quality of our intention, what's the quality of the action, what's the quality of the result, what kind of connections can you see there. This is something you have to be responsible for. Nobody else can look after your actions for you. You're suffering because of your own lack of skill. Nobody else can make you skillful. You have to learn how to be skillful in your thoughts, words, and deeds, and that comes from being observant. There are certain basic principles that you learn how to avoid right from the start. As lens in the precepts we took now, just now, you learn how to avoid killing, stealing, illicit sex, lying, taking intoxicants, because those things are unskillful across the board. You don't have to reinvent the Dharma wheel on those issues. And you begin to see as you follow these, these precepts that they have to make you mindful too. You have to be mindful to keep the precepts in mind and then alert to make sure you're not going to step over them. And you begin to see that your life does become a lot better ordered, a lot better, a lot more peaceful. You're causing yourself less suffering, you're causing less suffering for the people around you. And then as you meditate, you take this quality, this, these abilities, and you bring them inside. You make them even more solid, more consistent. So you begin to see the subtle things the mind does to make itself miserable. Because it's the suffering you cause yourself. That's the big suffering in life. We tend to blame our sufferings in other people. But it's only to the extent that we allow them to make us suffer that they actually can cause us to suffer. It's that we make the difference in what we focus on, how we interpret things, how we deal with things in life. And that's where we need to develop more skill. And as with any skill, you need to be mindful and alert. So this is why we practice with the breath, to develop these qualities. At the same time, when you breathe in a comfortable way, it's relaxing, it feels good to be right here, right now, and that makes it easier to do the skillful thing too because you're coming from a position of refreshment, a position of strength. And it's this goodness that we can develop inside. That's what's going to see us through. That enables us to overcome the other qualities we may have inside the mind, and also not to react to anything that's unpleasant outside. As we develop these qualities inside ourselves, we become a, it becomes a gift. This skill we develop becomes a gift not only to ourselves but to the people around us. The people connecting us in, in all kinds of ways begin to benefit. So as Lumbu, one, Lumbu Sawat once said, okay, each of us in the world has only one person, i.e. each of us has ourselves, i.e. we have to be responsible for ourselves. But looking after ourselves doesn't mean that we're selfish. If we look at, after ourselves skillfully, the, the benefits spread around. That's why we practice, and that's why it's such a good practice to take on.